Last Sunday, we lit the candle of love. We light it and the candles of hope and peace again as we remember that Jesus, born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and bring us everlasting peace and joy. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One is holy, and he has done great things. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope, peace, and love grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him there will be everlasting joy in the earth. Joy is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy that we find in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, to do your will by sharing your joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. And now I invite you to listen to the messages on joy from Carmen and from Pastor Bill. Welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin our service with our call to worship. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us you created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the joy that cannot be contained but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you that we may mock, pardon me, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Our opening prayer. Lord our God, we praise you for your son Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the savior of every nation. Illume our way as we journey towards Christmas. Grant us the courage to experience joy. Joy in the face of apathy. Joy in the face of sorrow. Joy in the face of uncertainty. We ask this through Christ who is the light of the world. Amen. I have joy, joy in pain, joy in sadness, joy in discouragement. I have joy, the joy that comes from within, innate with that of Christ, the joy to do his will. I've got joy, the joy of Christ which eludes him when he finds a lost soul. I have joy, an aftermath of obedience which is seen in salvation joy in God's law. I have joy, joy in tribulations, joy through tough times, joy in various trials. I have joy, the joy that lasts, though I might be visibly shaken, the joy of salvation. What type of joy? That is the joy of Jesus, the joy that sustains through though there are troubles, the joy of peace, it is the joy of salvation. That is a poem by Wogu Ndozi. The joy of God. In preparing for the coming of Christ, we are called to seek the peace of God, the peace that only God can give, that peace which comes when we turn and walk in the path that Jesus has shown us. Joy is not something that we can seek. 
It is something that overtakes us when we walk on the path that Jesus has set before us. As we walk that path, joy happens to us. We gain glimpses of what it is that God is about. We encounter situations where we see God's promises coming true and we have suddenly this great joy in our hearts. Why is joy such a strong characteristic of Christian discipleship? Advent provides us with two focal points for our joy. First, we rejoice because of the past. We look back to that incredible time in human history when God became a human being and came to live among us in Jesus to save us from evil and sin and to give us hope for the healing of the whole world. Secondly, we rejoice because of the future. Yes, we know all about the continuing presence of evil in the world, but we rejoice because it won't, we know it won't always be like this. The day will come when God will heal the world completely and we will live together in justice and peace. Joy feels natural at this time of the year with Advent and Christmas, and so it's easy to hear texts like this one. Rejoice in the Lord always, Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. But what about those times when joy feels hard to reach. What do we say then? The church, Christians acknowledge re the realities of the world. We talk about hope and peace and joy and love. And we also talk about the hard things that are happening in the world. Things like violence, things like tragedy, things like refugee crisis, things that defy understanding. We cannot deny what is happening in the world because Christ never told us to not tell the truth about life. He never told us to only be happy or carefree or bright all the time. Instead, Jesus told us to bind up the brokenhearted, tell the truth, and stay near those who suffer. We know that difficult things happen and that sometimes it might feel like there is no room for that in the Christmas season. Some years, the holidays are just plain hard. We understand and we make room for that. Scripture doesn't promise us easy lives or lives without pain, but it does promise us that those things do not have the last word. We are waiting for Christ's light to break into our world and bring the joy that feels so elusive. We stand here in the real world at the junction of where pain and hope meet, and we look for something better. We long for joy, and we say, O come, O come, Emmanuel, O come, God, and be with us. We proclaim, just by being here, what joy really means. We testify that the joy that comes with Christ stays. It's there in the best of times, but it's even there when times get tough. You can be a joyful person and still cry alongside the world because being joyful means you know it isn't supposed to be that way and you believe it can be better. Joy defies our circumstances. Joy flows deep even in the face of challenge, hardship, or suffering. Joy, drawn from Jesus, God with us, sees the big picture beyond the immediate pain. Joy understands that there is more that meets the eye, that God is at work always, even in the tough stuff of life, and that eventually God will make everything right and healed and whole, including us. Because of that, we can experience joy in the here and now, no matter how bad the here and now looks and feels. As we continue to practice opening our hearts to God's Spirit, immersing ourselves in His Word, and aligning our thinking and perspectives to His ways, 
we experience his spirit working within us, bringing us clarity, understanding, and strength to trust and see and act in the joy he provides. We read these words from the Gospel of John. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In other words, Christ is the light of the world, and the worst that the world can do is still not enough to extinguish that light. And if that light cannot be extinguished, then neither can joy. We believe that the light will always overcome the darkness, and we believe in the miracle that came into this world, a baby lying in a manger. Joy is something rather overwhelming. It is what happens when we witness God at work, whether it is in our family relationships, in our church, or in our community, and in the wider world. And so, our work as followers of Christ is to spread that light and spread that joy. Because joy is different than just a feeling. Joy is a way of living as people following the light of Christ into the world. Claiming joy is an act of faith, and living with that faith is an act of revolution in a world that can use a little joy right now. God's gift of joy is there for us all to claim, not just in the good times, but especially in the bad. When we see the works of God being done, we receive the gift of joy. And when we allow God to do his works through us, we give the gift of joy. Joy is a wonderful thing, a thing that overtakes us when we are on the path shown to us by Christ. It is not continuous, at least in this world, but it pops up whenever we see God at work healing the sick, curing the lame, giving sight to the blind, and proclaiming good news to those who are poor. It pops up when we do the work of God and understand that God is doing his work in the circumstances around us. Everlasting joy comes, so testifies Isaiah on the day of Christ's second coming. On that day, he testifies, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly on that day. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. There is a day coming which we are called to be prepared for, a day coming of an eternal joy, a joy which we receive a taste of in the here and now when we receive the gift of seeing God at work and when we do the works of God and thereby make it possible for others to have the joy of seeing him. Let's choose to make this a season of joy. Let's rejoice as we figuratively await the arrival of Christ and let's celebrate his birth with joy. God is with us, and so joy is with us, a joy that flows deep within our spirits and outward because our King, our Savior, is with us, always loving, always working, even in the midst of any hardship we will face. And so, as we watch and wait, be witnesses to the light of Christ and the joy it brings, and live as the people who believe that this joy and the one who brings it can change the world. Let us, God's people, pray. O God of loving kindness, you have written on our hearts, granted us unlimited pardon, and still we look away toward earthly wants. Let us see and hear again through the faith we have and the faith we want, that we will blossom into the full fruits of eternal life in Christ. O Lord our God, your saving help is our joy. O God of loving kindness, create clean hearts, renew right spirits, and awaken your written law within the hearts of all political leaders on this planet so that their actions will restore all people to their rightful justice, mercy, and peace. O Lord our God, your saving help is our joy. O God of loving kindness, calm the fears and pain of all who are afflicted by illness, turmoil, or doubt and refresh the energy of all who give them care. O Lord our God, your saving help is our joy. O God of loving kindness, we offer our praise and unending gratitude for the joy and gladness of those we love, now alive again forever in your glorious and bountiful spirit. O Lord our God, your saving help is our joy. Almighty and eternal God, break us out of our self-protecting shells to die to temporal distractions 
that rooted in the holy ground of Christ, our spiritual fruitfulness may nourish our souls as you guide us all into eternal life. We ask through Jesus, our great high priest, and the Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, who together with you live, love, and reign as one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice in God always, and again I say rejoice, for God has created you with the capacity of joy. We will find what makes us joyful and make that our gift to the world. Trust in God's good will for all creation and open yourself to God's gentle, transforming love. We will welcome new possibilities in our lives. We will offer ourselves to God's goodness. We will go forth in hope and peace and joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know as it is really a band, but uh, we just get together and play together. Uh, so it, anytime uh, when people would come over to visit, we uh, would just pull out the instruments and start playing. Dad would be on the fiddle, um, Joanne, Levine, uh, Joanne on the piano, Levine on the guitar. Uh, I was usually pretty small then. So anyway, Clem, uh, he learned to play the piano and well, he plays lots of things. Yeah, no, whenever we get together, it's just always been music. Uh, there's nothing like music. <laughs> Life wouldn't be the same without music. to go but little darling they're not there anymore so just remember me I'll remember you Pastor Bill Evans Shetland Fellowship Baptist Church uh, preparing you know, Advent messages for Chet TV here with Marlon, and we're thankful for this, his, this ministry opportunity for us and that they do. And uh, so we welcome you as you listen in to just uh, be encouraged. Uh, uh, we like to read from our scriptures what we have. And uh, I was given the, the message to deal with it's, uh, the subject of joy. And uh, I, I love joy. I love laughter. I, I'm, um, I, I'm a, I should have been a surgeon. I like to be a cut up and what. But uh, joy is a wonderful thing. And so we're going to look at that subject today if we can together. So um, one of the things, that, the, the famous passage in the Bible that has to do with uh, Christmas is the well-known Luke, uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 2. And there's some verses I just read you there quickly, and it says, In the same country region there were shepherds staying out in the field at night, keeping watch over their flock. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And... Uh, they go on to describe the story there would be a sign if they went and saw them. But the, the subject of joy, um, uh, is, when we look at this passage we see here, the, the important thoughts about joy come out, and I want us to uh, consider that. And my first point is this, joy, uh, real joy, comes out of a well of good news. The well of good news. And the good news was shared by these angels. Scared the liver out of the shepherds at first, but they... Um, they come on there and, and he comes along and he, they, they show up and the shepherds are out looking after their sheep and that's what good shepherds do. They take care of their sheep, protect them from the wolves and everything and Jesus likened himself to a good shepherd. Uh, the, the first part of the good news, he says, after he scares them, he says, do not be afraid, 
well, that's nice talk, and uh, don't let the fear be on you, and, and whatever. And uh, he, he found them to be afraid. He says, because why? Because I bring you good tidings of great joy. Uh, good news. I bring you good news. So somebody says, well, you, they jump out, and uh, they got a, um, something special for you, a cake for your birthday or whatever like that, and surprise you. And then there it is, and people come in, and they're all surprised. But they like the, the gift that's there. Um, so do not fear. I got good news. And so the uh, joy of Christmas is t attached to the good news of what happened in Bethlehem and that manger scene out there uh, in, the, in the little town of Bethlehem. And he says, do not be afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. Uh, great joy, mega. It's, uh, the word is mega there, mega. You know, we talk about mega size, your fries and mega fries, all those kind of things, and none of us need that. But uh, that's what they try to sell you, and they want to uh, mega up it. But he says, uh, great joy, mega joy is available. That's what I bring you, and that's what I offer you, if you'd like to have that. And um, so mega joy. And, and then uh, how, how, how great is the joy? You know, somebody asks that question sometimes, say, say something, well, how, what's the answer? How great is that joy? Well, the greatness of the joy is found over in the uh, next thought. It says, um, uh, enough for all people. I got great joy, which shall be to all people. And, and the story of the gospel, uh, the story of the Christmas story, it's a story that can bring joy to all people. If people would listen to this, people say, uh, Jesus, he's just a swear word. No, he's not. If you know him and have a relationship with him, you have this wonderful joy in your heart. He, he comes and lives there and he says the, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and, and peace and long-suffering and gentleness, goodness, those things that make you happy. And so out of the well of uh, good news comes the great joy, enough for all people in the world. And that, of course, has been the ministry of the, of the Christian church, is to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, uh, to preach about Jesus and his love and his power to heal, his power to help, his power to, you know, to take the brokenhearted and lift them up, to lift up, he tells the church, to lift up the hands that hang down, strengthen the feeble knees, and encourage and of course, as Christmas season comes, we're so aware that that's important that we be ready. He says, there's enough joy for, the, for all people. And this says, why? In verse 11, he says, why? Because uh, for, for today in the city of David, a child is, who has been born who is Christ the Lord. The Messiah has come. Jewish people knew that term, Messiah. Uh, so they, they know that term and he says I got good news why because a child who has been born today and he's the Messiah and that was they, they had heard he was supposed to come everybody knew he was supposed to come when was he coming he says he's coming back we know that when's he coming the issue I always try to harp from my pulpit our call is to just be ready our job is just be ready because he says he's coming for us again one day um, so he goes on from there. It says, child is going to be born, and, uh, and, and he, he's going to be the Messiah. And uh, so then with uh, this angel, verse 14 goes on to say this. And uh, so it says, suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying what? Glory to God in, in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased or men of goodwill. God is pleased with men of goodwill, people of goodwill. Uh, there are those who are only in life for themselves. What can I get out of it? What's it benefit me if I help you, if I do whatever? And we'll talk about that a little more. But um, the, the part that's important here is the angel sang glory to God in the highest. If we want to have joy, and uh, uh, it's, it's so important for us to see, if we're stuck on ourselves, we can't have joy. Why? Because joy is not, you're not the answer to joy. You may bring some joy to somebody's life and whatever. And uh, you might bring your wife flowers and that brings her joy. And wherever, that's a short-lived joy. But if you want a lasting joy, it comes from having a relationship with God. And so these shepherds were told, and, and then when they told us, the Messiah is here, and then glory to God in the highest, the angels sang. And they wanted the people to know him. Glory to God in the highest is the very important part of life. The Westminster Catechism of Faith, a bunch of theologians got together. What is the chief end of man? Well, somebody says, what do you mean? The head or the, tail, the feet? Uh, no, what is, what is man here for? And they summed it up this way, to glorify God in all your life and then to enjoy him forever. That's the chief end of man. That's why God made man, to glorify him in all our life 
and then enjoy him forever in heaven. And so that's what joy is about. And so he says, glory to God in the highest, and then peace among men of goodwill. God wants people to live in peace. The world is in turmoil. The world hates everybody. If you're not the same as me, I, I have a license to hate you and dislike you and run you down and belittle you and not be nice to you. And uh, that's, that's the attitude of the world. My Bible tells me, au contraire, that God wants it to be a people of peace. And so he says here, glory to God in the highest and on peace, on earth, peace. In this Christmas season, what can you do to help there be more peace? What can you do in your community? What can you do in your home to make more peace, a more peaceful situation? And, and peace is, is so vitally important. Um, and he wants to give peace among men. And so he shows you how to have peace. Be a person of goodwill. Be a person of goodwill. That Do not think highly, more highly of yourself than you ought to think because you're made out of the same dirt as everyone else. You're no better than anyone else. You maybe had a better chance at education. You, you maybe have got better genetics for education and those kind of things, better genetics for muscles, all those things. You're not better than anyone else. If you're dying and that person's the lowest in the scale down here has got a kidney that you need and whatever, you're not better than anyone else. You can take that poor man, that sad man, that lost person, that, that person that's got nothing a little to offer in life. You can take that kidney and save yours. You're not better. And so a man of goodwill is just realizing to others that you're, you're nothing great and special except that what God has made you and to be a blessing to others and to help. And so joy comes to man of goodwill, peace and all these things. Good news I have, great joy, enough for all people because the Christ child has been born. Glory to God in the highest, the angel said. Focus on that in your life and you can have peace and you can be one of those good men that God wants to uh, bless the world through because that's what he likes to do. Now, i got another passage here goes, and that first one there is, joy comes out of a well of good news. And I was just blessed recently. I've had my eye on this and was supposed to pick it up, but I had to get a cup of it. This summer, I brought home a, one of them old pumps. You know the ones you, you pump up and down and then you get the water? It's going to be an ornament in my front yard, and Lord willing, I will have some water underneath there, and it will pump water out. And Marlon will come over and have water out of my garden tap, through there and through the pump, just like old-fashioned days. That's the plan. But the problem with these old pumps, the leathers, uh, if you didn't uh, keep them primed or use them all the time, the leathers got wore and the, and the water that's behind there would leak down and you had to prime the pump. We said good news comes, the joy comes out of the well of good news. Well, that well to keep it primed is talked about. In, in, here's a, some verses in Paul writing to the church at Philippi, which was a wonderful book about joy. And there he has these words to say as I close. And he says, he says, make my joy complete. So joy can be a, a kind of a process. You don't just get it all today, bang, there it is. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind and maintaining the same love, united in spirit and intent on one purpose. So we're talking about getting along with one another. And, and that's just important because as men of goodwill, that's what it's about, being people that get along with each other. So Paul uses this expression and he says, make my joy complete by being of, of the same mind, maintaining the same love and united in spirit and intent on one purpose. That's it. So your community, your church folk, your, your, your ball team, whoever you got, it's, it's, you got to be, if, if you've got people on, on two people, three people in a, in a boat and they're all paddling different directions, the boat's not going to go anywhere. And God says, for us to have joy in our life, is, is, Paul says it this way, he says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind and working together as a people of God. And that's what he wants us to do. Uh, so strive for that. And that way you can become one of these persons of goodwill. And then he says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. That's a person of goodwill. Don't think yourself so high. Just whatever. Do not uh, regard, mind, be of humility of mind regarding one another as more important than yourselves. And as you do that, you can have a merry and a blessed Christmas with the joy of God in your heart and the blessings of Christmas that he offers to you. Amen. May your heart be blessed. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm.